Hey, it's Benja. In this video, I will talk you through my process of creating a modular asset for my game. As you might have guessed, these grids that you see are all using the same few pieces. As I already know I will add a lot of crates to my game, I want them to look different from one another, while not having to model and sculpt too many pieces. If you follow me, then you might know that I'm working on my own game. I haven't talked much about it for now, apart from the fact that I will do everything myself, from the art to the code. While my process is sped up for this video, it is still really long, so please feel free to use the chapters to skip to the part that you're interested in. If you find my voice annoying, please mute it and put on your favorite track. Now let's dive into it. The idea was to create a basic wooden box that I could close or let open to add stuff into it. I wanted to have a few options to make them feel or look unique, like wooden planks to the side, metal bars, a metal frame and uh, metal corners, as you can see here, to be able to create different boxes and shapes and play with them to have different results so I could have a few of them next to each other without the player noticing they are actually the same boxes. While I'll be commenting the whole process, there are a lot of things that you'll see me do that I probably won't explain or they'll be just too quick to see. So please, if you have any question, any subject you'd like me to dive into or make a slower video to explain it properly, please let me know in the comments. I'd gladly do it. And as you can see, I started from modeling, which was actually the concepting part too. I had a lot of references to create those crates, but I didn't have a proper or precise design or concept, so you'll see me try a lot of things in Blender before I settled with the final shape of my boxes. I created each piece on top of one another to make sure they would fit in the final stage of my box, but I then separated them so I could clearly see each one of them individually as you could see for a split second there. Um, you saw my shape becoming blue and red, that's because I'm um, uh, verifying that the normals are uh, set in the right uh, orientation, so making sure the face are looking the right way, if you will. And now what you're seeing me do is model the planks for the high poly. I wanted to sculpt each planks individually, and you can see that I started by masking them, which is definitely not a good idea. And I settled for the face uh, sets option of Blender, which, as you can see, allows me to um, paint with a color each planks and then hide uh, everything that is not one color to focus on this single color and thus uh, sculpting each planks individually. If you're using ZBrush, I guess it is called polygroups, but maybe I'm mistaken, so you can do this too. If you're wondering about the brush I use, I'm mainly using the default uh, Blender brushes. I really like them, actually. But for the wooden details that I'm doing now, I am using the famous Orb brush. Um, Orb being uh, Michael Vicente, I, I guess it's his name, I'm, I'm not sure about the pronunciation. He's an artist from Blizzard, uh, his, his brushes are all over the internet because they are really good, but actually I'm only using this one from him. Uh, for the other brushes, I, um, I use a default Blender brushes. If you want the Orb brushes, they are free, and uh, I will put a link in the description for ZBrush and a Blender. Now, here is a good les lesson um, by a mistake I did. You can see me all uh, do all these little nails and I forgot a really important step of creating anything in 3D or even in 2D, zooming out. You can see me work really close and maybe you didn't catch it, but I actually did every nail twice, because I did all of them, zoomed out, and figured they were really too small and not, not looking good. You don't want to forget uh, how will this piece be used. 
crates in a game, uh, I think most of the time you won't zoom in on them. So the shapes must be readable from far away. So I want these nails to be big or not to be there because it just looks messy because it adds, it adds details that you won't actually see or it doesn't matter. At least to me, these nails needed to be bigger. Um, what you can see me do is the exact same process for the top. So creating face sets to be able to sculpt each planks individually. I'm wearing the edges using default brush and then uh, creating these wooden shapes uh, for the, those lines, those wood lines, I'm using the orb brush and for the rest I'm using default uh, blender brushes. As you can see, this time I created my nails uh, big from the go and I actually activated the high poly from the box from time to time just to compare it and make sure everything is uh, cohesive and they look kind of the same on each piece. Now for the metal part, you'll see me do a lot less sculpting. First, because I don't know how to sculpt stylized metal. I tried a lot of times and it just looks too realistic to my taste. So you'll only see me wear the edges and add a few scratches. Um, the second reason is that I found a way to paint metal that I like. So for the metal, I will rely on the texturing stage and not the sculpting. What you can see me do here is uh, looking if the low poly matches the high poly. And you can see how I spread the meshes. So when I bake the textures, they don't bake uh, into one another because I might want to use some of these meshes without the others. Um, now the small stage I show here is because I didn't sculpt the inside of the box. So I'm copy pasting the maps from the outside of the crate uh, to the inside of the crate because if I let my box open, you will see the inside. So I need it to have some, some maps. Um, I then re-imported th those new textures inside Substance Painter and replaced them and voila, you have uh, the texture maps for the inside of the box. I am now beginning the texturing phase. I started by creating two folders, one for the wooden parts and one for the metal parts. I added an obvious color, red as you can see, uh, to make it easier to mask each and every piece that should be wood. I will do the exact same thing with another color, blue, for the metal. This way, when I want to work on the wooden parts, I will work inside that folder and uh, I'm sure I won't af affect the metal parts and the, the same way I can work only on the metal and not the wood. I'm starting by adding a base color and uh, I like to hand paint a few variation of that color onto my mesh. You'll see me switch a lot between the modes of the viewport. I'm switching between the base color mode to see clearly what I'm painting and the material mode to not lose track of the final result. As you can see, I have created two folders inside my wood folder, one for the metallic and roughness and the other one for the colors, so I'm not touching metallic and roughness while working on the colors. And what I'm doing here with this red is creating a gradient from the position map. This technique I learned from Fanny Vergne, which is, uh, who's another amazing artist from Blizzard. You should check her out too. And now I'm working on the edges and cavities. There are plenty of ways to work on them. Uh, my two favorite ones are either using a fill layer with my curvature map and the level filter to tweak it, or use a fill layer and uh, the generator from Substance Painter with the curvature. Um, both uh, can achieve, I guess, the same result, but don't work quite the same. And for some reason, I sometimes prefer one or the other. You might have missed it, but I created two folders inside my wood folder. One for the metallic and roughness that I won't uh, tweak from there. 
and the other one for the color that I'm working on. Uh, most of the time, my roughness is uh, really low and metallic too, because I want a stylized result, so I don't want to tweak them, because it tends to look too realistic to my taste. You'll see me do a lot of back and forth between my layers and tweak the modes of them too. Um, I like to work that way, to add stuff, tweak it, go back, to, back at it. Um, I'm using uh, the layer modes, uh, basically trying out stuff, see how it looks if I switch it to multiply, screen, soft light, or normal mode and tweaking the opacity too. Um, I'm really enjoying that phase of trying stuff out, see what looks the best to me. You can see here these planks, how reddish they look. Uh, this is because of my gradient done with the position map. So um, after a while I went back at it and I guess I actually erased it for these planks because they don't look nice to my eye. Um, what you can see me do here is actually hand painting uh, cavities like I done the edges before uh, to mark those shapes and make them uh, more visible. If you are wondering why I don't care about the nails and I am passing on top of it while painting, it's because I know that I, I will put my metal layer on top of the wooden layer and I will paint metal on top of the wood so I don't have to worry uh, of what I have painted on these nails because it won't be visible once I've done the metal uh, color. Now here is a neat little trick I really like. If you create a layer and make its mode to pass through, you can now add filters to it that will affect every uh, layers that are underneath it, meaning you can tweak the contrast or saturation, for example, of every layers that are underneath it. Um, it's a great way to tweak uh, stuff you've done, but don't rely too much on it and don't forget to um, disable this layer if you want to modify layers underneath it because otherwise uh, your changes are already affected and not only will you need a powerful computer to actually do it but um, you won't really see what you are doing because you are doing something that is uh, affected in real time by those filters. What you can see me do here is checking my normal maps and I saw that I uh, actually uh, by mistake painted the cavities on the normal maps so I disabled that. And now what I'm doing, because I didn't sculpt the top of the box, I am actually um, emulating the sculpt by painting the normal maps. If you want me to make a video about how to paint any texture map inside Substance Painter, I can do it. This serves two purposes to my knowledge. Uh, the first one is like I'm doing here, uh, is to correct the sculpt. So if you want to change something to your sculpt or actually uh, emulate the sculpt like I'm doing here. And the other reason could be to, um, to correct some artifacts you got from the baking, but I, I guess this is not really a good reason to do so, because if you got artifacts, then you might have done something wrong uh, with the model and you should, uh, you'd better be um, correcting these errors uh, instead of trying to paint over them to, to hide them. Uh, what you can see me do here is painting the nails, uh, masking them for the metal folder because for the other parts I used the polygon fill from Substance Painter but because these nails don't have uh, their own polygons I couldn't do it that way so I had to paint them by hand. Still it was pretty fast and not so much work. Now I'm doing the base color for the metal. Um, as you can see the same process I added the base color and adding color variations um, hand painted color variations and using filters to create some shapes. For the wood I used a lot of warm colors so to create contrast and make my asset interesting I wanted to use cold colors for the metal as you can see here. Each uh, layer I'm adding and it goes the same for the wood um, are pretty subtle. Uh, I guess it's Fanny Verne who says that you should stay subtle if you want to make 
a stylized look. And I agree with that. I think you'd rather have uh, multiple subtle layers uh, than having um, two obvious ones. Uh, here I will go about what I was talking before, which is my way of painting metal. I'm actually pretty proud of it because I copy everyone else, of course, like everyone does. I'm emulating stuff I've seen on the internet, on tutorials, on games, um, for everything. But for metal, I couldn't really find a great way of doing it. And by accident and by trying stuff out, I discovered this way of doing it that I really like. So basically I create abstract shapes that I then turn into even more abstract shapes by using filters like a blur. And then I uh, follow these shapes with light uh, brush strokes. And it gives the metal this kind of hammered, used look. I guess it works for rocks too, and I really like it. I'm not saying that I'm original in any way because I'm sure there are plenty of people using this method and I just uh, didn't saw them. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's a great way to do it. I think it's kind of fun and creative and um, I always try to make it fun because uh, if you are going to create assets, it takes a long time. So if you don't have fun, I guess you should do something else with your time. Um, as you can see, now that I've ended with the color, I'm tweaking the metallic and roughness and going back to my wood. Because now that I've done my metal, I guess I, I found that my wood was looking too cartoony by being a bit too orange and uh, yeah, too flashy to my, for my taste. So I went back to it and kind of added dirt. I could have added the dirt generator from Substance Painter, but again, I don't really like it because it feels too realistic to my to my eye. Um, here I'm adding details uh, like shadows underneath each uh, nails because to me they didn't pop enough, if that makes sense. So yeah, here is how I went about making these crates. Uh, the rendering you are seeing now is made in Unity. It is definitely not the best tool to show off an asset, but as I'm making a game, I wanted to make sure it looks nice in Unity. I might go back to the texturing stage and tweak stuff along the way, but uh, for now, I'm happy with it. If you have any tips to share, any questions about this video, or you'd like more content like this, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, feel free to subscribe or follow me on ArtStation and Instagram. And until next time, take care.